This is the, the gospel. And when you actually think about it, we don't think about it enough. It'll break your heart because this is a love beyond understanding. Woo. Hebrews 2, 9 to 18. But we do see him, Jesus, who was made for a little while more than the angels of Jesus. Now, you understand? He loved me. He loved me so much that he freely, out of his own free will, became man. But he knew if he became man in a fallen world, he would have to assume our fallen position, not sin. Because of sin, we are lower than the angels. We lost that glory and status we had because of sin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus knew if I become man to pay their debt, which is a human death, because he's spirit, right? If he's spirit, he can't die human death, right? No. So how does he die human death? By becoming a human a little lower than the angel. Yeah. But he knows if he becomes human, he would then voluntarily make himself lower in glory and status than the very angels he created. That's beautiful. He is beautiful. Yeah. That's why if you think about it, he's going to move you to cry. <clears throat> why would this God, this beautiful Savior, wow. <clears throat> you do it for me? When I can't stop sinning against him, not because I want to, I don't. Why would he put up with me? Why would he? Why would you do it, Lord? He became a little Lord than the angels. Why? So he could suffer death because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, so that because of God's favor, he might taste death for everyone. That's what he did. It. He did it for us, yeah. Our eldest brother, God's firstborn son, came and said, I'm going to pay the debt for my brothers and sisters. And this is why it says, for it was fitting for him, for whom all, th all, all things, meaning it was fitting for God the Father, for whom all things exist, that through whom are all things, and bringing many sons of glory. See, God wants to glorify. He wants you to be glorious and glorified and living forever in deathless bodies and never sinning and never suffering that's what he wants he wants to bring you to that state of glory but he had to do it by perfecting the author of our salvation through sufferings meaning that jesus had to suffer in order to complete the plan of redemption because part of your redemption including suffering for your sins so you would be spared that was the plan now watch for both he jesus who sanctifies because he's the one who makes us holy and those who are being sanctified are all of one, meaning we belong to the same Father. For which reason Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. You see, it's a family. So Jesus says to the Father, I, Father, will recount your name to my brothers. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing your praise. So he's saying to the Father, Father, I will join my brothers and sisters in praising you. And again, I will put my trust in him. My trust is in my Father always. And again, Behold, I am the children whom God has given me. So my father has given me, you, my family, to save. Now here's the thing with Satan. And therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, so if God's children are human, flesh and blood, guess what Jesus became? He himself also partook of the same. He had to become flesh and blood. Right? Yeah. Now watch how deep it gets. Why? So that through death, excuse me, because for him to die human death, he has to be flesh and blood, right? Yeah. So he became flesh and blood and died human death because in death he would now destroy and make powerless him who has the power over death. Who has the power over death? The, the devil. devil. Why? Because who tempted Adam and Eve to sin and then bring human death? Right. Satan, right? Yeah. But by obeying Satan and disobeying God, they gave Satan authority now to bring death upon them by accusing them every time they sin. In other words, he now goes before God. Wait, they sin, right? Doesn't your law say the soul that sins shall die? Well, they sin. They got to die if you're just. That's what he does. Wow. 
That's your debt, right? Yeah. Well, when Jesus died to pay your debt, he now destroyed any authority he may have to go before God, cause you to die. So now when he says to Satan, shut your mouth. You have no authority to accuse him anymore. Get the hell out of my presence. Their debt has been paid. So he might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. For surely he does not give help to angels. He doesn't come to help angels out of their mess. But he, come, he gives help to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in all things. So he was like us in every way. He was born weak, meaning the body that he took from the Blessed Virgin was a body that could grow old, could get tired, could get sick, could get diseased, and die. So he became like you in every way with one exception, sin. So that may become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. So he now makes propitiation. Now he pays the payment of sin so God can be appeased with you. For since he himself was tempted in that which he suffered, he's able to come to help those who are tempted. So I'm going to break this down a little more because I have one more passage. What it's basically saying is this. He became human. He experienced the fullness of human existence and life. And he didn't make it easy for himself. He didn't come in a human body that was morally, not morally, I'm sorry, physically incorruptible, meaning he didn't take a body that was like Clark Kent Superman. Doesn't get tired, doesn't get fatigued, doesn't get sick, cannot die. He became a human being like all of us with the exception of sin. So he voluntarily allowed himself to take a physical body that could get old, that could feel pain, feel misery. He chose to take that human nature. So this is why he could be beaten and he'd feel the pain. He could be nailed, he could feel the pain. He could be punched and feel the pain, and he could die. So when you stand before the Lord, he has such compassion for you, because he will say to you, I know what you've been through. I know what was like because I also went through it. So I'll give you an example. I've done this so many times, but I just want to hammer this point. You cannot go before Christ and say to him, he's the only one of all the gods and goddesses of the nations that are fake. This is the true God, but he's the only one who can say, I've walked a mile in your shoes. So you can't say to him, you don't know what it's like to be betrayed. He's going to say, I don't. Yeah. My best friends, my own disciples, abandoned me in my time of need. I don't know what it's like to be betrayed. You don't know what it's like for someone to sell you for money. Have you read my story? You saw what Judas did? He betrayed me for 30 pieces of silver. You don't know what it's like for people to think you're crazy and out of your mind. He goes, oh, really? Have you read Mark 3, 20 to 21? Mark 3, 31 to 35. It says, my own family thought I was crazy and out of my mind. And they were embarrassed of me and wanted to lock me up in the house. I don't know what it's like. My mother was standing by the cross, looking at me, her baby boy. Beaten beyond recognition. <clears throat> Severed the gospel accounts. It says they blindfolded him and go prophesy, which one of us is about to hit you? Roman soldiers trained to knock people out and kill them. Full blast, punching him in the face. While he was blindfolded. While he was blindfolded. It's one thing seeing a punch coming and you can block. It's another thing 
to be hit by a grown man. A trained soldier can kill you full blast and don't see the punch coming. And on top of that, they whipped him. And the whipping would actually shred your back. So it's your skin would be like sharded paper. And then spikes driven in his hands and his feet. And his mother has to see her baby naked and beaten to a bloody pulp, dying before eyes. When you stand before the Lord, he's going to say, Beloved, my mother saw me die before eyes. And then another man had to bury me in his tomb. She couldn't even bury me in my tomb. You don't know what it's like to bust your back day in and day out. Splinters or hitting your head against an object or smashing your hand with a, with a hammer or falling over or, you know, hurting. You don't know what it's like. He's going to look at you because you don't know my story, do you? Since at least the age of 12 to 30, I had to six days a week, not five, six days a week, bust my back with Joseph carrying huge stones and rocks or wood and chiseling and cutting and sawing and nailing. And I did that all the way up until the time when my father tells me, son, it's now time to begin your ministry. And he didn't begin it until he was around 30 years old. That's what Luke 3, 23 tells us. What's the point? Jesus in his love experienced the fullness of human life in order to tell you, I understand. I've been there. I get it. Yeah. I get Thank it. you for breaking that down. Wow. I, I never thought about it that way. Thank you. Yeah.